What's up guys, it's Hotline 7 RCT bringing you another video for you guys. I hope you guys are, go are doing great out there. Um, I wanted to do this for quite some time. Uh, emulation is something that's really a part of what RCT is all about. You know, everything that has to do with the retro gaming, um, the classics and stuff like that. If you go back and you watch any of the videos that I have uh, way back in the beginning, you're going to see everything is emulation. You know, emulation uh, either with the one that I'm going to feature today, which is a PlayStation Portable em Emulator, which is the PPSSPP, huge, incredibly long name, um, but yeah, uh, that's not the point. The point is that emulation is something that is still at this time 2019 is still a great area in the minds of a lot of people that's not what this video is all about uh, if you're looking to go into the politics of it this is the wrong video for you guys today i'm just going to focus on where is emulation on 2019 i know a lot of things it has come very very far from the humble beginnings way back in the day now we have a lot more power basically these emulators are running everywhere from phones to pc to tablets to you name it it's usually there like at the first go um that's not the point either it's not it's it's more like let's check out give a quick view a quick glance at where emulation is standing today so today i'm going to be starting with the playstation portable one and i'm just going to dive deep in uh since uh recently i did a, a up, upgrade to my computer i'm just testing out all of these softwares and games and stuff and different settings it's part of what i love to do i love to do tweaking i know a lot of you people out there love to do the same there's some of us of course some people out there that rather have something be done in the simplest way possible i respect that i understand that as well we have a lot of things going through our minds and we want something simple however if you're the type like me who like who likes to tinker and tweak and change and move around stuff um, from what it's supposed to be then yeah emulation is something that's very appealing in that sense of the word so yeah um before i did cover extensively if you go back to my old videos, you're going to see a lot of coverage um, between retrospectives and classics. And of course, this is one of them. Why did I choose this one today to start off this kind of like mini series dealing with uh, emanation? Because to be honest, this is one of the most, um, I would call it one of the more classic emulators because once this hit the, the, the i'm gonna call it the market it's free you don't buy it but once it hit the streets this one just kept going going and going and got better 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 you didn't see that much delay and everything works like right out of the box you know so to speak it's been a very elegant application from the get-go and it has only gotten better with time and you're gonna see it I mean basically it's everywhere even on Android and iOS and stuff like that so that gives you an idea of how these programming wizards have uh, dealt with this software that they have made for us to tinker and tweak and have fun with classic gaming so yeah that's uh basically what I gotta say about that I'm gonna walk you guys through basically how everything is set up and stuff at least how I have it on my end and yeah i mean for the gaming pc 
that probably I have and many of you have, this is probably overkill in terms of power and stuff like that. There's not a lot of people who have top end or like really, really powerful PCs, but they love this kind of stuff. They love emulation and who knows, maybe they, they after watching this video, they'll want to go and grab it and tweak for themselves and have some fun. If even one person does that, then I, I think I achieved what I wanted to with this video. So let's go right into it. Engine that's gonna be moving everything instead of uh, DirectX or uh, what was the open the other one? OpenGL, I think. We're running at nine times the resolution. That brings the resolution basically very close to 4K or a little bit over 4K. You're gonna see very quickly when I load up a game. You're going to see very quickly at the top of the screen, it's going to come in very quick, you're going to see the resolution of it. Um, you can pause the video in any case if you want to verify. But that's the closest that we get. Uh, hardware transform, software scanning, very nice uh, effects, hardware tessellation, of course, where it applies, although most of these games never really use much tessellation to begin with. but and the upscale level, just in case I need, or I'm like away from the 4K resolution, being that the PSP resolution was like, I don't know, 100 and something or 200 and so I can't remember the exact resolution, but to bring you all the way up to 4K, whatever's left, you know, the upscale is going to take care of that. Uh, and everything basically configured kind of uh, very close to what I would configure in a PC game. Now, uh, frames per second counter, of course, just to keep that in mind in case you feel or you see some uh, little slowing down or skipping, you're going to notice, you got to remember guys, this is not the real deal, this is emulation, so there's some things that are bound to, you know, uh, not work exactly the way it's supposed to. Now. This one, and this is the last part of the settings that I'm going to get before jumping into a game, this post-processing shader is very important because I tried various post-processing. This will give it like the extra oomph in the end. It'll add some effects to the game as well as change some stuff in case you don't like the way it looks. I tried them all, and to be honest, I, I'm sticking with this one, Video Smoothing, because it's the one that brings the closest PSP look, but in a better resolution. Everything I tried here, it was too much. It was either overkill, like this one. It would just, you know, turn the, the, the fonts and stuff like that into something that's not really, it doesn't feel real. So the closest one, unless you want CRT scan lines and stuff like that to reproduce the old TV feeling, I would say that this one works pretty well. And of course, it doesn't take as much resources if you're going to play all out like this in 4K. So that being said and taken care of, everything is very straightforward. If you got a question on how to set it up or anything, and I can help you with that, just leave a comment down below. For now, let's go into the games here, and let's boot up one of my favorites because, come on guys, just listening to the music is like, oh, yeah, let's go, you see that, Four, uh, 4320, I think I saw times something else. That's basically the, the internal resolution that this is playing. This is uh, telling the PSP engine For langer Zeit that it's running in that internal. Zufrieden. Niemand bemerkte den Schatten, der sich langsam oh. über ihnen ausbreitete. Yes. Die Dunkelheit trübte ihre Sinne. Und das böse now, of course, in ihre like I mentioned, you can tweak this in many ways. I mean, just take for example, we're watching a video 
zu spät that was designed to have the resolution to work on that tiny PSP screen. And you're watching it even though it looks a little blurry because it's not going to change the assets, it's not going to change the menu. The game, however, will be much different. Now skip the video here and go to the title screen. This is a good way or best the best place where you can actually check and see different changes. I'm going to go in real quick because it's just so seamless to do. From here, I have it configured that with the left trigger button, I can just pause it. I can save the game from here on the different save states that you have. And you can go into settings from here just using the buttons on the controller. Um, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to specifically the one that I mentioned post-processing one. I'm going to change it into something like, let's say, CRT um, effect. Scan line C There are two, in case you get confused. This one that has the CRT in the beginning is CRT scan lines that make it look like the TV of old. From here, you just press back until you get back. And you see, you start getting these nice, like, scrolling lines effects, kind of like a TV would act. Yeah. But when you go into the game, mm, the mix with new, of new graphics are upscaled. Where it's not like, I mean, there's people who's going to like it. I wouldn't go that far. Now, if we go back in and go to post-processing -pro and we go back down to this one that has a CRT at the end, you're going to notice a little difference. See? You still have the scan lines, but they're a bit different. They're more marked, and the coloring is kind of like giving you this this kind of blur or or lighting effect that closely resembles a TV of the past. This one might be up a lot of people's alleys um, because it, it's more it feels more natural in the CRT vibe. However, I'm gonna keep it said which is the video smoothing one now if you go let's say with something like 5br you go into something like this you get out and it's a little too much it kind of messes up a little bit the art you see on the font here Konami logo you can notice a little I don't know like unevenness to it and here, as you can see by the Dracula X Chronicles font, it looks a little washed out. I mean, it's completely like anti aliased but it's not. It's it just off. It looks off. It looks like it's distorted in a way. So, yeah, I've taken enough of your time going through this stuff. So, let's go into the game, even for a little while. Video smoothing, keep it there. And see, everything comes out very nicely. You see the font, the 2D font, the score and stuff like that, looks nice with no jaggies. And the, the 3D element stuff, which in the game is running right now, you see everything nice and crisp. No distortion of the assets or anything like that. The textures look very nice. So yeah, I think we can work with this. I already have a file here. Hopefully with the recording we won't have too much frame skipping.
This is not like your preferred way of playing or you know, watching the game. There are tons of ways that you can configure and basically mess around to get that desired effect. I can't wait to get my hands on Bloodstain, which should be coming out, I think, the end of this month. You are so dead. When I say you can't continue playing, all you have to do is just look for a save state and just press corresponding button and you're done. That being said, see the save state is right there. You just load it from here and that's it. Simple as it can be. Now let's go back to the menu. One more here. Let's try something with movement. Like, let's say I have more games here. 
trying to remember which one that was. What is this? Bandai Namco. Oh, I think this is uh, um, um, Ace Pilot or Air Combat. Air, Air Combat or Ace Combat. Let's go back and do a short race here. Wipeout. I already have a file done, but it's going to ask you, just like on the PSP, to you know create a save file and all that stuff. Safe state? No, I don't have a safe state for that. I have my save right here. Loaded. With the familiar PSP screens. I'm do a quick race here. Not a little too crazy. I'm going to use phase R because that's Usually the first one that I start off with in a wipeout uh, game. And here we go. Ready. Go. Get out of the way. Now you gotta be careful how you configure the buttons. Because I have right now, I need to change that later on. I have right now the menu button configured to the left trigger. That's a problem because if I make a mistake like like that, I might mess up the gameplay. But as long as you remember where you have your buttons configured, you shouldn't have a problem. I know buddy Aaron Classic Gamer has had similar issues like that with his um what was it? The emulator that he had with the RetroPie. And that can be a pain in the ass when you hit a button without realizing that it's either taking you out of the game or even worse, like in his case, you might actually turn the damn thing off. Autopilot. Was a useless autopilot. Oh man, looks nice. Rockets. Oh, this one is nice and fluid. 60 frames, scrolled out pretty well. Even though the internal resolution is at 4K, it's still running really, really good. Oh, oh, oh. Nobody to shoot. Ooh, I didn't know I had that. Can't wait for an F Zero on Switch. Oh my God. So there you have it, guys. Here you can let the system save it for you. It's gonna save into that virtual, you know, memory stick. Or if you're super, super paranoid like I am sometimes with the saves, you just press the menu button and save it right there. Let's 
So save state, boom. And from there, just exit the menu and choose another game. So that's gonna be all for now, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it, I shed a little bit of light uh, for those who were on the fence about emulation and stuff like that. Um, this is an awesome, awesome emulation, and even in 2019, it still holds up really, really well. For those of you like me who enjoyed very much the PSP when it was the in thing back in the day, and yeah, I'm gonna try and cover some more emulation. You know that the Dolphin one is coming up because you know GameCube and all, and we. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, guys, and take care.